Ezekiel 37, <clears throat> the hand of Jehovah was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of Jehovah, and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. And he caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. <clears throat> They had been dead a while. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord Jehovah, thou knowest. If God asks us a question, instead of volunteering an answer, sometimes we need to um, defer to his answer. We should almost always defer to his answer. Because uh, he's usually asks us a question to see if we're on board with his program. And that's where we all want to live. Again, he said unto me, prophesy over these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of Jehovah. Now this is interesting. He's got, this, he's got Ezekiel prophesying over the bones. God wants us to enact what he wants to have happen. So we got to be in tune with him in that manner as well. So we've got to be in tune with his ways, which was the verse before, and then we've got to be in tune with what he wants to have happen. So he said, prophesy over the bones. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am Jehovah. So he is going to resurrect this valley of dry bones. He's going to resurrect all these people. <clears throat> going the wrong way. Okay. So I prophesied, prophesied as I was commanded. And I prophesied. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, an earthquake. And the bones came together bone to its bone so here's the obedience part we got to be in tune with what God wants we got to speak what God wants and then we are obedient the earthquake brought the bones together and I beheld and lo there were sinews upon them and flesh came up and skin covered them above but there was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say the wind. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Um, one little word in here makes a big difference. Breathe upon these slain. So these bones had lived at one point and they were slain. They were killed. They've been murdered. Okay? Breathe upon these slain that they may live. <laughs> People want their dry bones to be resurrected. And they often neglect the fact that these dry bones that they're referring to in Ezekiel were of people who were slain for their belief in God. And God came back along and resurrected them. And this goes along with we need to promote the things of God even unto death. Because the God we serve can resurrect us. So I prophesied as he commanded, 
And then the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. So a great army was slain, and the Lord resurrected them. Resurrected them. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. So these are his people, the bones of his people. He's resurrecting. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Jehovah when I have opened your graves and caused you to come up out of your graves, O my people. So even if every Christian is slayed, <coughs> the Lord will resurrect his people. And I will put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I will place you in your land, and ye shall know that I, Jehovah, have spoken it and performed it, saith Jehovah. He'll do it. He has, he, he, Jesus has conquered death. Came back. All we need to be is obedient. If we're looking for long life and an easy death and an easy path, that's probably not God's ways. We need to be um, obedient we need to be in agreement and we need to pray his will be done the word of Jehovah came unto me again saying and thou son of man take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel his companions then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph the stick of Ephraim and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them for thee, one to another, into one stick, that they may become one in thy hand. Now Judah and um, <coughs> Samaria had split, or the nation of Israel split after Solomon into two, and so they're joining it back together. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou, wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will put them with it, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. And these sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes. Sometimes I don't need to explain anything. It's right there in the scripture. just needs to be read. And it is God's inspired word. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, whither they are gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall no more be two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor their detestable things. An idol is anything we put, uh, we give preference to over our preference for the Lord. Nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them so they shall be my people, and I will be their God. Transgressions are when we do something <coughs> our way rather than God's way, and it's, it, it's, it's sin. And my servant David shall be king over them, and they shall all <coughs> and they shall they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in mine ordinances and observe my statutes to do them. We're gonna walk in his ordinances and observe his statutes to do them. We have to know what they are. 
we have to let him lead us back through his laws and show us his heart concerning his laws. And if we ever, and if a believer ever does that, then it then it's just so much easier to say God's ways are best. If you don't know his ordinances and his statutes, and you say you're going to follow Jesus in his ways, but you've never let him go back through and show you his ordinances and his ways, his statutes, then how do you know they're the right way? It will remove all doubt. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, they and their children, and their children's children forever. And David, my servant, shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. <clears throat> God wants to come live among us. He wants to live in our heart. Christ died to, as the punishment for our sins, and the Holy Spirit is sent to guide us and then literally one day we will live with him and nations shall know that I am Jehovah that sanctifieth Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore not only that we're supposed to be an example of doing things God's way It's so easy for one nation to look at another nation and say, oh, I want to do that, or I want to be like them, or I want to do trade with these people. But if they're not godly, why? We need to be the example. We need to know God's ways, follow God's ways. He'll bless us. He'll, that will be an example for them, and that will draw them unto him. rather than sadly as what normally happens is he gets pushed out Father I thank you for this word help us to know your statutes know your ordinances help us to be obedient help us to enjoy you there is no other way Lord help us to get over this fallen world that thy will be done that you will redeem it and that we will get to live with you Lord it is so hard to watch Lord people reject you turn away from your spirit and turn to everything everything else <clears throat> to think they know all the answers but to watch them fumble it's just so hard to watch Lord and I pray that each of them will repent turn to you and that we will all draw closer to you in Jesus' name, amen.